many twists and turns, the rise and the fall of the career of Joelle Joni Siwa, otherwise known as Jojo with a bobo, Jojo Siwa. I have charted Jojo Siwa's popularity by search volume over time according to Google Trends from 2013 to 2024. So basically what we're doing is we're tracking her fame over time and how this corresponded with her controversies, scandals, big moments, milestones, and etc. It's not going to be perfect, but trust me when I say you're taking a college course, you're not going to find a better course on Jojo Siwa. This is Harvard 55,000 Jojo Siwa memoir. Video. So Jojo was born on May 19th, 2003. She's like exactly, I guess not exactly. She's like a year older than me, which I didn't know because it always felt like she was like a lot younger than me. So that's kind of like spook magoo. Her mom is Jessalyn, who you probably know from Dance Moms. She was like a dance instructor and had a dance studio. So like this girl was born to do what she is doing. She had an older brother and they just lived in Nebraska. Jojo's mom knew she was gonna be a star. I would say it's my mission in life to make Jojo a star. I only started it in 2013 because that's when she got on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. Her life before that, useless, worthless, irrelevant, not worth talking about. She was not even famous at all. So anyway, so let's start in 2013 when JoJo is on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. Basically, JoJo is one of the youngest dancers there. She's known for her huge personality. She's like the firecracker, they call her. She's a loud mouth. Abby and her get into it, of course, all the time. And she really does like light up a stage. Like I remember being like, she is fun to watch. Even though she, I wouldn't say she was a fan favorite because people didn't like her attitude. She didn't win on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. I don't even think she made top three, but she had personality, she had the bow, she had the brand, and she had the mom. Because her mom made for such good TV and her mom was so cutthroat. Her mom needed it to happen. So they slay on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition and are offered Abby Lee Dance Company to be on Dance Moms. This is huge for them, of course. So in 2015, Jojo and Jessalyn join Abby Lee Dance Company and the show Dance Moms. Once again, Jojo is not received well. Like I remember watching the show when I was younger and I was like, I do not like her, she has an attitude. In hindsight, she was being iconic and like not taking abuse from Abby Lee Miller. So she's actually kind of slick. And also Abby was so specifically shitty to her. Like there's this clip where she has the girls go in a circle and tell Jojo one thing they don't like about her. And they're like, sometimes she's very loud. You take off opportunities from people who have been here longer. You're still getting used to picking up in two days. Sometimes she's a little too crazy in public. That personally, like if that were me, that would like make me die inside a little bit. Like I would have trust issues. I would have a hard time making friends. Like that seems damaging. She was like a great dancer on the show. Again, the bows, the brand, she was so cute. She was big. She was like a star in the making. But basically in 2016, she leaves for bigger and better things. In 2016, JoJo comes out with the song, I'ma come back like a boomerang. It blows up, it's everywhere, seriously. The music video, everything. Then she signs a contract with Claire's for the licensed JoJo bows. And as we all know, this becomes like a cultural phenomenon. I remember my sister had every single, she had like at least three. It was ridiculous. It was like, it was a frenzy. Her brand really resonated with little girls and she blew up as a child entertainer. Even to this day, you can't go into Walmart or Target without seeing her face at least 10 times. Like this was really easy to find, but I will say it was on sale. I got it for $2. Anyway, she is slaying on her own after leaving Dance Moms. Then 2017 hits and she gets the Nickelodeon contract. This is huge for her. She gets appearances on other shows, which just continues to blow up her star. She does her first few live performances. The bow craze continues. She starts her YouTube channel where she's doing behind the scenes. She's doing music videos. It's popping off. And she's kind of on her first press tour to just talk about herself. I mean, she really is becoming a cultural icon. So we can see this is her first spike in popularity and fame. Now we're in 2018. She's continuing to fuel the fire of her child fame era. Seriously, this year is not very noteworthy for her because she's just continuing the things that were noteworthy in 2017. But in December, she does get in that beef with Justin Bieber. I remember that vividly. She basically just had a car wrapped with her face all around it. Very first sign she was becoming a meme, I think. But she had a car wrapped with her face all around it. 
and Justin Bieber just commented burn it twice. By the way, the way Justin Bieber uses social media is like any shitbag guy from your hometown. It's hilarious. But yeah, she commented back and then he had to apologize and it's like a whole thing. Justin Bieber is probably one of the dumbest people alive. Sorry, but it was really funny. She is like the most strong, confident, great role model there could be out there. I just loved her for that. I believe she does take out her ponytail for the first time in 2018. I wanna say it's in a Miranda Sings video. Oh. Then we come to 2019, the dream tour. This is her big, huge tour. If you were between the ages of three and 11 during this time, there's a good chance you went to this tour because this shit was everywhere. It was huge. This is where she started putting the star diamonds around her face and she was like, again, like such an influence on culture at this time. You remember it, we were all there. She leaves for this tour in May, 2019, but then in June, 2019, a makeup kit she had in Claire's <laughs> Uh, had dangerous levels of asbestos in it and had to be recalled, which was obviously a bad headline for her, but I feel like she was six at the time. I think her response was basically like, this was my team's fault and Claire's fault. I'm so sorry, but like, I just have to trust them. Like, I feel like that is no bad on her. Sorry, she was 15. Really who should apologize is probably her mom and Claire. So comment below if you tried Jojo Siwa's Asbestos Claire's makeup palette. I would love to know what the results. Did you die? Let me know. She does have her moment babysitting Northwest, which I feel like is probably one of these small peaks in 2019 for search volume. She also gets to do Mass Singer, Angry Birds. She's just doing a lot of anything she can do to get her name out there and kind of fan her flame. But she kind of tapers off. She really doesn't make any headlines because she's just doing what she's already been doing. So she's not breaking the boundaries. But then 2020, the teens and the pandemic find Jojo Siwa to be the most iconic meme of all time. Everyone is Jojo. Welcome back to Jojo. So every single one is that. It's your guys going to stop and turn it. Then I'm going to do something. <laughs> She was getting bullied for the hairline nonstop. Everybody found out her age and, they, and how tall she is and they started making like the big baby jokes. She was sick of being a meme and wanted to leave the child star heirs. In June, she does have a blackface controversy. People were upset because she did a music video called Nonstop about like a circus and one of the girls was a monkey and had her face painted brown, which is obviously not a good look for anyone involved. But she didn't apologize. She was just like, she's supposed to be a monkey. What do you want me to do about it? So. But I feel like to try and recover from that, cause she like tapered off after that. She like had a downfall after that. I think her recovery strategy was that she dyed her hair brown and she thought that would like bury this controversy. <gasps> Maybe it's because people were saying brown face. So she wanted to dye her hair brown. So when people Googled Jojo Siwa Brown, this came up before this maybe. That feels like a little reachy, but I just, want to let you know where I'm coming from. August, 2020, she starts doing the YouTube circuit. She's on James Charles. I think she went on like Nikki tutorials. She's doing all these YouTube videos and she's on every popular YouTube channel trying to be like, I'm making Jojo Siwa look normal for a day, making Jojo Siwa look like an adult, Jojo Siwa full glam. And I remember what a cultural impact it was to be like, holy shit, Jojo Siwa like is really like gorgeous when she's dressed like a person. This is wild. I think this was her trying to escape the meme era and get into her adult era. So I believe this is how she made that transition. And I thought it was very well done. We saw a small peak but it's nothing compared to what we have coming up. 2021. So January 4th, we're in with a bang. She gets in a little bit of a controversy because there was this board game called JoJo's Juice and with her face all over it, of course. And the questions were very inappropriate for kids to be seeing. I don't know what happened, but she was getting a lot of shit for this. So what happens like 20 days later, JoJo Siwa comes out as pansexual. And this is her biggest peak fame moment of all time. She is everywhere. People are mad at her her because they think she's not child friendly, but most of the reception is overwhelmingly positive. Like good for this girl to be who she is, to set that good example for people to, you know, just go forward as their best self. Cause Jojo Siwa at this point was really such an upstanding member of society and such a good role model. But part of me feels like, was this like her PR team being like, crap, she's getting in so much trouble for the Jojo juice. Do we pull the trigger on her coming out? They like had it in their back pocket and they were like, go time. Let's do it. Like, did they have People Magazine? They were like, just so you know, Jojo is queer, but we're not gonna announce that until we really need it, okay? Okay, and then like, eventually they were like, hey, I'm guessing you've heard about the Jojo juice scandal. We're gonna need to pull the trigger on that headline. <laughs> Thanks. This high really lasts for like a good chunk of 2021. 
21. February, she gets in her first relationship with this girl named Kylie Prue. Honestly, most of 2021 is just a positive public perception of her as a gay icon and Ellen died so that Jojo could thrive. I don't know. Basically, we're just writing this out until it tapers off around summer, but then she comes back with like a boomerang and joins Dancing with the Stars in September 2021. This is where we see this quick peek because she is the first same-sex couple to dance on Dancing with the Stars, her and Jenna Johnson, and they do a great job. I mean, Jojo is a professional dancer, so it's kind of unfair to everybody else that she's on it. Then she breaks up with her girlfriend, Kylie Prue, for the first time in November 2021. When Dancing with the Stars ends, she obviously falls off again, but then in spring, she has another uptick in popularity because she's judging So You Think You Can Dance, but she's also beefing with Nickelodeon because they don't invite her to Kids' Choice Awards. Now, I don't think this was ever confirmed or denied, but she felt like it was because she came out and Nickelodeon no longer thinks she's kid friendly. Could that be it? Could it be something else? I don't know. Throughout 2022, we see her just doing pretty well for herself. It's up and down, but it's obviously net higher than it ever has been before. She beefs with Candace Cameron Burr saying that she's the rudest celebrity she's ever met. And it's mostly because Candace Cameron Burr hates gay people. August, she breaks up with Kylie Prue for a second time. I have no idea when they got back together, but that's another headline maker. But then a month after she breaks up with Kylie Prue, she gets to together with Avery Cyrus in September 2022. This was messy because it kind of seems like Jojo did something shady because she used to be in a girl group with Avery Cyrus and Avery Cyrus's girlfriend. And then like immediately after Jojo goes through a breakup, she splits apart that couple. Like the, the timing is just suspicious. So she was being messy, TikToks were made, feelings were hurt. And this hurt her public perception. Cause I remember people on TikTok were like, Jojo, have you learned nothing? I feel like this was our first hint of Jojo might be a cringy narcissist. This was like our first little taste, I think. But at the same time, like I would never judge her for that. That's like an 18 year old girl coming out of the closet for the first time, having her first relationships, having them in public, like whatever. She's famous, she's rich, she's dating other girls who are in the public eye. Like it's a lot. So I don't judge her at all for this. She is coming to her own on TikTok. She's collabing with more relevant TikTokers and YouTubers. She's kind of, we're starting to see her as an adult, but we're also starting to encroach on her flop era, which I feel like started in 2023. We see her second biggest spike in popularity ever in March, 2023, because this is when she she was on her Snapchat pretending to be pregnant like all the time. Like she was making pregnancy jokes or like pregnancy jump scares like 24 seven like overtime. Now I get it. Snapchat is a really hard platform because you have to be like clickbaity on the end and it's super confusing and weird. By the way, follow me at Ty Bender Bender with two R's. So I get trying to play that game's hard. She has a lot of pressure on her. You have to post like 70 Snapchats a day, but she did it so many times and so many different places. And people told her so many times that they were offended by her pretending to be pregnant and I feel like she just never stopped. So like for some reason, this headline is everywhere, everywhere. Then in April, the following month, she beefs with Candace Owens. If you're not beefing with Candace Owens, are you really anyone? Or did you do anything? Did you make a stand if you didn't beef with Candace Owens? I'm waiting for mine. Then June, she collaborates with Shane Dawson. Yes, this is like years after he's been canceled. So people are like, why would you do that? Like, it seems like you're too famous to be collaborating with defunct Shane Dawson. Dawson. This is also around the same time when Colleen Ballinger gets canceled. She does her whole toxic gossip train spiel and Jojo stays silent on it and then eventually comes out in I think September going on Howie Mandel podcast, Tana Mojo podcast, doing the whole run of defending Colleen. Like honestly, she was really good to me when we were friends when I was 12 and she was 30. So I can't say anything on that. Girl, what? This is where it gets suspicious because she is friends with Shane Dawson, James Charles and Colleen Ballinger. Maybe there's something that we don't know. She's dealt with so much childhood irregularity that she probably doesn't know how to identify safe and good relationships. But to defend Colleen Ballinger in that situation, there was so much proof. There were so many victims speaking out and she was like, well, I'm standing by her. What? Then her popularity kind of drops. I think she laid low after she started talking about that on those podcasts because she just needed to shut the fuck up at that time. February, 2024, very recently, a former member of XOMG Pop, which is like a group her and her mom put together to try and replace her as a child star. They were like, oh, Jojo needs to be an adult now. But being a child entertainer makes so much money. We got to replace her. We got to get that coin. So their strategy was to like do a show where they build a girl performing Jojo Siwa group 
and then once they have it together, they'll like go tour it. <sighs> Honestly, I don't think it was that successful, but one of the former members comes out and has horrible accusations against Jojo Siwa. Apparently she had a medical condition and they were incredibly dismissive of it, made her dance through horrible pain. They drilled the girls like they were literally at military boot camp. They were verbally abusive to them. It sounds like they just repeated the Abby Lee Miller cycle onto this group of girls, which is absolutely just beyond. Around this time, we had this Dance Moms reunion planned, and of course, Jojo Siwa had to open her big fat trap and talk about how disappointed she is that some members didn't want to be respectful enough to show up, like shading them for not coming. Them not being here is kind of like, let me erase my past, pretend it never happened, shove it down the drain, when it's like, that's why you are who you are. But it's like, this sounds like some of the worst trauma a 12 year old girl, like I remember my parents watching the show and being like, what parent would let their kid go through this? Now we're to March. 2024, which is where we are right now. And as you know, Jojo Siwa has been everywhere. She is doing her rebrand. She is in her bad girl era, her perhaps can't be tamed era, her karma is a bitch era. So I feel like what we've seen recently could possibly be a cover up for this entire season of bad behavior, because I feel like that's a, been a trend in her career because we had board game scandal coming up. We had a blackface scandal. James Charles YouTube makeover, Jojo Siwa is an adult now headline making situation. You know what I'm saying? So is this a pattern or is this just the natural ebb and flow of a career? But what I want to know is could this be another peak in her fame? We're right here. She's on the climb the past couple months, but will it be a noteworthy peak or will it be another small peak within a large career? Or is this her downfall? Is she going back to the 2013 arc or can she recover from this? Also, do we think that search volume popularity is a good predictor of fame? and career viability because maybe she could be trending for a pregnancy scandal, but is she liked by the public? Is she getting deals? Is she getting promotions? I don't know. I am in a three kid phase. I want three kids. It's one day I want to have a great little family. I got my three kids names picked out. Freddie, then this is dedicated twin boys, Eddie and Teddy. I'm serious having phone call. Who are you calling? Personally, I'm calling the people in the Titanic submarine. The situation, the submersible, that whole thing. I'm calling them. I was a bad girl. 